All right, Shalom Rastafari. This would be a continuation on um, getting to the root of the truth, the roots. Some don't want to get to the roots. They don't like to get to the roots. You know what I'm saying? And remember what Christ said. That one who doesn't have root in themselves. Now, we hope that this um, so-called brethren, you know what I mean, and we, we still like to call them so, but then we remember what, what, what the word says. We remember what Yeshua HaMoshia said. Now, he want to call I and I an idolater. You know what I mean? That doesn't really offend I and I. We say that he's speaking like a foolish Gentile. He gets offended. Don't call me a fool, right? And we say, we didn't call you fool. We say, you are speaking like... And we say you're quacking like a duck. And somebody quack, 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 quack. Uh, they, do we say you're a duck? Stop, you stop acting and speaking like a foolish Gentile. Now, what we're going to address right here is the point about the word, right? And I think we can probably do it a little better in this format than we could do um, previously in, in, in the previous part. Let's say we bring up this particular page here that um, we found on the internet. Because in hearing... Um, Omar Tobijah and even others. There's other folks that also have, you know, these um, philosophies about Christ. You understand? Know and about the Son of God, about Yeshua HaMoshiach. You understand? Know Some say he was just a, like Bush. Bush, you know, the former president Bush. Bush says that, well, Jesus Christ is one of his um, favorite philosophers. So some begin to think that his majesty is about philosophies. The world can take it as philosophy, but we as the children know it's the teaching and the utterance of our Father. You know, the teaching of His Imperial Majesty. So let's um, bring up the speech of His Majesty. Just to remind you, we, we touched on this page before, but the, the view on the camera at that time wasn't very clear. So um, this machine might be overheating. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is this, this page right here. See this page right here? This page is called um, Ecumenical Councils. Now, a lot of these things, even I and I didn't really get into it in the early days of I and I Rastafari tried. A lot of us don't, you know, because we, you know, um, we're zealous. You understand? We're zealous. But we still need to learn and be founded and grounded on the knowledge of the Bain Ha Elohim. The knowledge are of the world that here, according to Ephesians, say so. Because when we have that, right, then we can come together in unity. See, we saw about Rastafari uniting, and how come we're divided? Because we have diverse um, philosophies and doctrines out there. You understand? We have some who submit themselves to the teaching of His Majesty to learn what the will of the King of Kings and His Christ is, and then you have others who. You know, um, being zealous, may recognize that Halas Lassi is God or, or see that divinity, but then a lot of the doctrine or teaching is diverse from what the King of Kings defend. You understand? So it's this page right here that we're going to touch on, right? You can look up um, Arius, or Arius, A-R-I-U-S, and Ethiopian, Christ, Ethiopian Orthodox, three words, Arius, Ethiopian Orthodox, but let's begin off right here, because some say, well, the word is one and the same, meaning that all the translations are of equal value. His Majesty didn't say all the translations are of equal value, but you see, folks will tell you this, you understand, and they'll make you believe it. Remember, His Majesty said, even if one pretend or, you know, try to make others believe it, it does not shake the truth from its place, so the truth is still in its place. But for the, those who might, um, um, you know, for those who are children, in the sense of children in this knowledge, as I and I, many of I and I also were children in this knowledge. You know what I'm saying? We knew certain things concerning the King of Kings, but we still did not know the half of the story. You know what I'm saying? The half of the story. You know, it was just, just, just because, like, look at John, I mean, look at John the Baptist. John the Baptist said all that he said, like Marcus Garvey. But later on would end up, one could say, betraying or denying the one who he, you know, the one who he proclaimed. Now, you can see this right here. We in Ethiopia, right, we in Ethiopia have one of the oldest versions of the Bible. But however old the version may be, in whatever language it might be written, it says the word remains 
one and the same. And then he goes on to say that it transcends all boundaries of empires and all conceptions of race. It is eternal. You know, there were some folks that actually try to use this to say that it really doesn't matter what race Christ is. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter what seed Christ is. To, to even um, controvert what the Bible says and what I and I history, you know what I'm saying, as the once lost but now found Beta Israel says, you know, and that's a false interpretation, you know what I'm saying? But what is Matthew saying, really, he's saying that we have, we in Ethiopia have one of the oldest versions of the Bible, but however old the version may be, in whatever language it might be written, the word, you see this right here? The word remains one and the same. Now, if you read the second paragraph and don't, um, you know, don't just uh, um, make a sound bite of that and then add your philosophy to it, you see right here where His Majesty says the Word of God. Let's read this paragraph here. No doubt you all remember reading in the Acts of the Apostles, that's chapter, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, of how Philip baptized the Ethiopian official. He is the first Ethiopian on a record to have followed Christ. Do you understand the context of that? The context is that he's the first one on record. To, that, that means on the record, like in the scripture, which is the record. And from that day onward, and this is what we hi highlighted right here, the word of God has continued. Notice he didn't say began. See, most folks will say that's where it began. But when we know the history of Ethiopia, you know, some holy Ethiopia, it is due to Ethiopia, Ethiopia, not modern, secular, rebellious, careless Ethiopian Ethiopia of today. Because Ethiopia is in a state of the great apostasy. You understand? But that's a, another related matter. So he says that the word of God, the word of God has continued to answer that Bible's Right? In fact, that they needed more Bibles so that people could grow more in the Word of God, and the Word of God is Yeshua HaMoshiach. Now, we pointed to um, John chapter 1 where it says, the Word was made flesh, the Word. He didn't say that all these translations are of equal value. That's what a lot of folks say, so they can try to say that, well, the teaching of the Lion and Jew Society of I, Rasi Adinos Teferi, of Wendem Yadin, to say that is false. They try to say, oh, you don't have to learn them hard or whatever like that. Those are ones who want to rob you of the barakat. They want to rob you and your children of the fullness. You understand? Remember the Bible says to study and show ourselves approved. You over that's why they don't want folks to have Bibles, because people saw that in the Bible when they were denying people the Bible. People said, how can we study if we don't got no Bibles? So what they did is take the Bible from them, and then they just explain to the people their own philosophies and interpretation. And that's what co has caused all these, these heresies, right? So he said that the word of God has continued to grow in the hearts of Ethiopians. And then he goes on to make the quote from Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and, and I will give you rest, right? Who can resist an invitation so full of compassion? So what is his majesty speaking about in this particular speech? What's the real point of it? If you look at this speech, and this speech only has these, these five um, paragraphs, one, two, this right here, which is one sentence, Right, so it'll be three, four, five, and that is the that is the fullness of this, right? Four, right? Four, no, five, right? Notice that, and look what's in the center. Look, what's in the center is a quote of the word, right? The word made flesh of Yeshua Ha Moshiach. Come to me, all you that labor. He didn't say come to the Bible. You know what I'm saying? He says, he's pointing out Christ. Christ is that word of God. So if you even study the context of this, you can see that Christ is at the center of this. Yeshua, Jesus, Christos is at the center of this right there. But they believe, right, they believe what Arius believed. Now, Omar tried to deny that he believed what Arius believed. You know what I'm saying? He tried to say, no, it's not about what Arius believed. 
and we didn't even get into discussing it. We pointed out certain things there, and he just brushed all of that off. You understand? He just brushed off. So we're not doing this so much for him. He's saying, oh, you did a video about me. How cool is that? Uh, you see, that's pride right there. You understand? That's what First Timothy talks about, not being a novice. You understand? Because one can be lifted up, you know, in pride and fall into the condemnation of the devil, the devil. Because they're a newcomer, almost like a new jack. You know what I'm saying? And this is not to, you know, this is not to um, demean him in the eyes of anyone. But this is that that portion of his doctrine or his teaching or his interpreta interpolation, not even an interpretation because he kind of throws the language behind him. He's throwing this counsel and instruction behind him. You understand? So we're doing this for the brothers and sisters who can receive it. So let's get into the heart of the matter right here. What is Arius? What was Arius heresy? Right? What was Arius heresy all about? And let's keep in mind First um, Corinthians chapter 17, I mean chapter 11, verses 17, 18, and um, 19. Because where it says that um, uh, Huadi Apollos Paul is, is learning about disorders, disorder, various doctrine and divisions, right? And, and he says to comfort us, saying that there must be heresies among you, that they, that they which are approved may be made manifest. Notice that key word, that they which are approved. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 19. So he's saying that they, there would have to be these sort of things. There would be days like these is another way of saying it. Because, you know, there's other teachings that we have to teach on. You understand, as we build, as we are edifying and exhorting, and as we are building up, you understand, building up our faith, you understand, so we may establish, you understand, this holy covenant, that we may be those who are approved, right? Those who are approved. So when you look into, um, when you look into uh, Timothy, let's go to Timothy for a moment. Timothy, 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 15, it says, Study, right, study to shew thyself approved to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, right, uh, the word of truth. That's why it says right here, the verse before, these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, before Adoni, before Geta, before Yeshua, that they strive not about words, no profit. So we're not just talking about just learning, just Amharic. We're talking about key words, key words that were controversial even in the earlier days of the faith in Ethiopia, right, and the, the, the church of his majesty, of which he is the defender of the true faith, held to a particular Bible-based Right? Interpretation. Mm-hmm. But there were others who came along and tried to finesse it, you know, and bring out their own version, you know, denying the foundation, right? Denying that Yeshua HaMoshiach, that he is the Son of God. You know what I'm saying? That yes was Christos. You know what I'm saying? And saying, well, somebody over there is Christ, or this one is Christ. But even as the Bible said, if they say that they are Christ, then we have to tell them that we are of Christ as well. You know what I'm saying? We are of Yeshua HaMoshiach as well, so we don't have to look in those secret places. You know what I'm saying? The, the affirmation that we have received in these latter days and time of Abba Kedu suffices it. We know that Jah will be waiting there, that we have to grow up. You know what I'm saying? To Him in all things. We have to conform ourselves to His image. You know what I'm saying? Conform ourselves. So this is from the page right here that we point to about the ecumenical councils. It says, since her recognition as an episcopate in 330 A.D., the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahido Church, Beta Christian Marlet, that is to say, one of the most ancient churches, right, in Christendom, has been fulfilling her apostolic duties, and apostle means one who is sent, you understand, one who brings forth that good news, right, duties up to the present time, all right, now it says that her doctrine, which is teaching, right, Tim Herod, give us the teaching of his majesty, because we don't want no devil's philosophy, 
See, emanation philosophy that as Matsy warned us about the certain Rastafarians, emanation philosophy is one such devil philosophy. You know what I'm saying? And we'll go into that in some detail, but nowhere in the speech of his majesty did he say Jesus or Christ or Jesus Christ or I am not Jesus Christ. Nowhere in the quotes that Omar made about the supernatural is, is a false, is a false a concept. Did his majesty even mention supernatural or, or false concept? So that's all Omar's own interpolation. And it's a shame those who, you know, are believing that cunning, that slight of man. You understand? But anyway, let's get into the teaching here. Her doctrine, what is the Ethiopian Tawahido Church or Orthodox Tawahido's Church doctrine based on? It is based on the teaching of the Ethiopian eunuch. Now notice how his majesty touches on the Ethiopian eunuch in the we in Ethiopia speech, all right? St. Matthew says, and other apostles. Mm-hmm. Now, I mentioned St. Matthew and not the other apostles because of Ethiopia's testimony of uh, St. Matthew Caduce Mateos being sent to establish that church. All right? So that's part of what we have to study, right, and show ourselves approved. All right? So, so there will be various heresies so that those who are approved, right, might manifest. It says, in addition, she, the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Beta Christian, Church accepted the canon and the decisions of the first three ecumenical councils, i.e., that is to say, um, in S, I think, in the Latin, but anyway, of Nicaea, Nicaea, Nicaea in 325, Constantinople in 381, and Ephesus. Remember Ephesus, the epistle of Ephesus, the spiritual warfare. You understand? The spiritual warfare. So this is not about flesh and blood. You understand? This is not about, you know, a personal issue, in other words. You understand? No, this is, what does Ephesus say? Let's just touch on Ephesus, because we have to rightly divide the word of truth. Now, notice how this testimony from St. Mary of Zion, that's important right there. You understand? How this testimony, and this is concerning our roots. This is concerning the foundation. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. That's supernatural powers. Overstand that. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Brothers and sisters, stop saying high and low places. The, the, the wickedness and low places we trample underfoot. Overstand that. Wherefore, it says in verse 13, and we're in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13, 6, 13. Wherefore, take to you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, the prunico, the pruno, this day, and having done all to stand. Then it's going to break down that, that full armor of God. So this is from Ephesus. So we're tying into this. You, you, you understand the false... Um, the false statements that Omar and others have made that his majesty denies or he, he, he denies who he is. He denies being Christ in his kingly character or that he, he says the supernatural is a false concept. That's the interpolation. I hope you brothers and sisters really read these things for yourself and find where he says supernatural, find where he says fatal con or false concept, find what, 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 what emanation, the whole thing about, you know, my father said folks are like this. My earthly told me this years ago, people will argue with you, you understand, to try to spin out your ammunition, you know, and then they'll try to say the same things that you said later on in their own way, put their own little spin on it, you know what I'm saying? And, and never once will they acknowledge that, well, you are correct, you understand? Because, see, they are wrestling with flesh and blood, you know what I'm saying, because they're natural. They're dealing with a natural man, you understand? They can't, they can't understand the things of the Spirit of God because they have to be spiritually discern, and now they deny the supernatural and then lie against Ketamawi, Haila, Shilasi. They deny against our God. They, they, they lie and deny basically the teachings of his majesty, and they purposely are telling you they're dealing with philosophy. Mm -hmm. And opinion. So it says that it still, still is teaching, the church is still is teaching their creed. The creed is very important. The creed, the credo, 
What do we admit? What do we naamen? What do we naamenalen? What do we say, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Because we're of one mind. So we can say naamen, you understand? And naamenalen, you understand? Naamen. You understand even how the word is one and the same when you can receive the things of the Spirit. You understand? And serving the Lord to this day. Now, firstly, it's the Ecumenical Council of Nikia. 325 A.D. Mm -hmm. Now notice that Paul was writing roughly 90 or so, 60, 70, you know, 90. He's writing between 33 A.D. and 90 A.D., all right? Now this happened 325. So it says, as is known, right, or at least should be known, if you're studying, the Nisian or Nikayan, Nikawian, and Nikiawian Council was called to oppose the heresy of Arius. This is why we said that that doctrine that Omar is about is like Arius or otherwise called Arian philosophy. Not the Arian, the Nazis, or the, you know, Nazis, not that. But Arius, the heretic, the Kahadi, the denier, mm -hmm, as this one and others are denying the teaching of his majesty. Ignorantly, some are in denial because they just don't know. And when they know the truth, they will, they will grow up and regenerate in the truth. Others don't care because they've already made their philosophy. You, you understand? So they're falling. They're slipping really now. You're right? Arius' teaching was based on, quote, The Lord created me at the beginning of his work. The first of his act of old. It was based on Proverbs 8.22. Now, it's interesting if you read that Proverbs 8.22, it's talking about wisdom. It's talking about who? Sophia. In, in the Greek, it's Sophia. In the Hebrew, it is um, Hokmah. And in the Gnostic, it's Akamot. You understand? But that's a, another story right there. Now, taking the literal interpretation of this verse, notice what it says, taking the what? And notice in, in um, Omar Tobijah's reasoning, he's talking about we don't have to get to the root of words, you understand, don't deal with the grammar or grammatical errors, and, you know, you, you know just, just, just philosophize on it. Taking the literal interpretation, or take his word for it, taking the literal interpretation of this verse, Arius taught that God, the Son, is a creature. Well, Arius, I got to look into Arius' background, you know what I'm saying, because he obviously is not a Hebrew, because you'll know that this is going to be talking about the sun, but it's talking about wisdom, you know what I'm saying, which is in the Hebrew and in the Ethiopic is feminine, or like some say a feminine aspect or attribute, you know what I'm saying, of, of the Almighty God. But Arius taught that the Son of God is a creature. This is the same thing that ones who deny that Jesus, Yeshua, is God, you know what I'm saying? God the Son, the Son of God. You know what I'm saying? They say the same thing. This is where you hear that in the world. Because remember, these heresies go all the way back to the father of lies, to Satan, Diablo. May Adonai rebuke, you understand? Satan, you understand? And all those who, who unknowingly or unknown, especially the unknowing folk. The people who are doing this ignorantly, believing that these speeches of ones like Omar that deny the teaching of his majesty. Some places he is right on. He was saying concerning the prophecy, but these are things that have already been known to Rastafari. But now he's introducing his own ideas, which when you study them, contradict the very foundation of the faith which his majesty is defender of. Now the heresy of Arius originated from the Gnostic, or really more correctly, and the Ethiopian will update this, the pseudo-Gnostic pseudonymo, science falsely called. Because it's true, Gnostic means to know, scientia, to know. But this is a pseudo-Gnostic named Lu Lucian or Lucian. Notice how it's close like Lucifer, right? Lucian, Lucian. You understand? It's not like Luke, or Luke means light, like where you get luck and lucky. You understand? But which light is it? You understand? Which luck is it? You understand? I used to say that luck was from Lucifer until the Almighty um, schooled me, saying that Lucifer had the light. He like recognizing that his majesty is God. They had the light, but not submitting themselves, they lose the light. 
And then the Almighty showed me this verse right here. And, you know, we, we build the foundation of discipleship on Matthew, right? The, the first basic discipleship teaching is on Matthew. You remember the Soa? Remember the Soa? Remember how Christ explained the Soa? Mm hmm He says about the Soa, the one went forth to sow. And he says, hear ye, in verse 18, Matthew 13, 18, hear ye, therefore, the parable of the Soa. Now, he tried to hit me up on the private uh, instant message on Ethiopian World Net and have a side con a sidebar, you know what I'm saying? And he tried to say, oh, you know that there's parables in the Bible. And then later on, he flip mode, tried to flip mode it. Since you sen since the, the, then he says, since the Bible is a parable. First, he says, you know that there's parable, you know the parables in the Bible. Then he tries to say later on, that's what you call, brothers, this is an object lesson, take notes, that's what you call baiting and switching. You know what I'm saying? Baiting and switching. You know what I'm saying? Baiting and switching. This is to the Holy Spirit, you know, that anointing, it shows us all things, all things we need to know in our faithful, you know what I'm saying, witness. Mm -hmm. And then there was Antiochian heretics, others who were of Antiochian, Antioch, Antiochia. You understand know where where Peter, the real Peter, he was bishop of Antioch, not of the Rome you think over in Italy, but of the other Rome. There were two Roman empires, two Roman capitals. You could study that in history. You could do a wiki on that, right? Even if it could be said that fatherhood belongs to God, he could not be the natural father, right? but the adoptive father, or we can say the spiritual father or the supernatural father. You know what i We already checked that right there. His majesty said no such thing. Mm -hmm. Among the heretical teachings, right, the heretical teaching of Arius was this. Here's what Arius taught. See if it sounds familiar. There was a time when the son, known as wisdom, was not. And there was an hour when he did not exist. That's what Arius taught. Compare that, right, with other heretics. Arius distorted verses to present God the Son as a creature and thus mislead the people. And that's why those who are standing up to check this, you know what I'm saying, are standing up to check this. You know what I'm saying? Alexander, the Archbishop of Alexandria, or Iskinder of Iskinderia, he made an effort to bring back, in other words, to kind of like, it's, you know, it says, if a brother fall away, those of you who are spiritual, but we have to check ourselves, you know what I'm saying? At least we fall into that same condemnation. So as we try to check this brother on certain things, we still have to be in the love of Christ and for Yeshua's sake, you know what I'm saying? But we have to be firm, you know what I'm saying, and even rebuke sharply, but not do it, not take it personal, don't get on the personal tip. Mm-hmm. But Arius kept firm, as this one seems to be keeping firm as well. Yet, starting from 320 A.D., he was spreading openly his heretical teaching in every town. So he was going around, right, and finding foolish people, you know, or unstable, unlearned people, and he was deceiving them. You know, some people really were seeking the truth. Like, people were really seeking the truth of his majesty. You know what I'm saying? And who are being turned aside. One is saying he's God, you know, transforming himself like, you know, he's God, but then denying the teaching of the God who he says is God. Now, now who does such a thing? You know what I'm saying? Archbishop Alexander, he called a local gathering of 100 bishops and presented Arius' heretical teaching. In addition, he informed the assembly of the Gubaye, Right? This was like almost like calling a, 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 a grand jury in a sense. That he had advised Arius to desist from his heretical teaching in order, right, not to raise a schism in the church. So this one is seeking to create a schism among Rastafari. You understand? By teaching like a kind of new gospel that's not the one that we receive, that's not based on the foundation, right? And to resolve the problem in peace. Say that word in peace, shalom. Now, the Synod, after examining the heretical teaching of Arius, it realized that he would not repent. 
In other words, he would not turn around. He won't turn to his majesty's way, but he's continually making an astray way. He's going astray, and then he's trying to make a way in that astray way. Unanimously, they excommunicated him. That means they, they, no more communication, no more fellowship. We can't really communicate with you. You understand? Because we don't want one to think in any way or wise. You understand? Avoid all appearance of evil. And what is a good definition of evil? Doing what seems to be right in your own sight. You understand? Teaching what seems to be right. Many of us have to admit that at one time or another we did that. You understand? But we had to come to this point. Repentance. To turn around. You understand? To be conformed. You understand? To Yeshua. Be conformed to the teachings of His Majesty. Now, King um, Constantine, he sent his close and trusted friend, um, Hosius Episcopos, of Spain to Alexandria, Iskenderia, right, because of the problem. Having discussed the case with the archbishops, Alexander and other bishops, Hosius returned to Spain and informed the king that the matter could not be solved peaceably. The matter could not be solved in Shalom or in Salam. After the archbishop Alexander had, had notified Constantinople by letter, Nowadays, it would be like by email, that the matter should be dealt with by a synod, like calling like a general assembly, almost like, you know, calling a, a grand jury for us to weigh reason on this matter and weigh on it, right? So that we don't teach our people contradictory things. You understand? The emperor called a meeting of the synod. On this basis, the meeting of the synod, which was held which held its preparatory meeting from May 20th to June 13th, was open in Nicaea, or, Nisa, or, or Nicaea, as one say, in 325 with the attendance of several bishops and their assistants. Having thus prepared its agenda, the meeting was officially opened with a speech by Emperor Constantine in the presence of the 2,000 participants. This reminds us of the autocephalus, or cephalus, you know what I'm saying, getting that um, independent, you know what I'm saying, that, you know, bringing the church, the Ethiopian church, from under the, the Egyptian Orthodox Coptic church, all right, that His Majesty also has done. So it's just kind of interesting. So we see how this is in perfect alignment with the teaching of His Majesty. Now, the topics discussed at, by the Synod were the heretical teaching of Arius, the discussion, of, no, excuse me, the decision of the Alexandra Synod, or Alexandrian Synod would be better, which was led by Archbishop Alexander against the heresy of Arius. The Synod, right, or Synod, after discussing these matters, it explained to Arius that all the biblical verses quoted by him and his followers against the divinity of God the Son were mistaken. Of God the Son were mistaken. Now notice how similar this is to those statements that Omar and Tobiah just said concerning the 120th of Lij Teferi, of the man-child. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, right? So you see how it's very similar in other places you say that Jesus is not divine. You know what I'm saying? And try to separate Jesus from Christ. You know what I'm saying? Well, you, you know, Yeshua HaMoshi is not schizophrenic or bipolar, so you can't really separate him from himself. You know, I'll separate him from his divinity and then give his divinity to somebody else. You know, saying? thus, right, thus and therefore, let's move it on. The fathers attending the Senate, they made great effort to Arius that Proverbs 8.22 does not show that God the Son, the Word of God, was not created like other creatures, but begotten from the Father before the world was created. Before the world was created. That's the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. You know From before the world was created. You know what I'm saying? So we both see that God the Son, understand, is the Word. So the Word is one and the same. That's what his majesty means. He doesn't, he doesn't say that all translations are of equal value. That would make, it, that would make our father a liar. You know what I'm saying? And our father is not a liar. You know what I'm saying? But their father is a liar, and they want to make a liar out of our father. You know, they say if you can't beat them, join them, right? But, you know, the Holy Spirit, you have to recognize, they quote it from the Holy Bible. You know, once they say, wow, you know the Bible. 
and, and they will only say this wowism because they don't know the Bible. You know what I'm saying? Like you let somebody else get your blessing or, 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 or cipher, you understand, or um, squeegee your blessing to you. You got to watch that. They quote it from the Holy Bible and explain to him, right, that now here's the, here's the key part is the explanation that God the Son, right, and that's Yeshua HaMoshiach, the Logos, if you were to read that in its Greek, the ones like Omar Tabajan, oh, why don't I have to read it in Greek? And that's just, that's just a logical error right there. It's, a lo it's illogical. It's, it's like antichrist, right? Because God the Son is the Logos, and he is God, right, of the same substance. Now, he replied um, in one of the, on the, on the timeline page on the Ethiopian World Net on the Facebook, and go there and check us out and, you know, join and friend and all of that, right? He, he, he says that, oh, uh, the Father and Son is not one entity, no, no, we didn't say entity. We said substance. You see, the word substance, you know, and this is getting into, yes, it is getting into certain grammar. It is getting into certain words. You understand? Know because the word is very, very important. You know what I'm saying? That's why when you go to court, you get what an uh, advocate or a lawyer, somebody who understands that law. You know what I'm saying? Or even in a true church, one who understands the word. The one whose word is based on that, 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 that faith, you understand, which was once delivered. We don't need no new kind of a thing. When we talk about the gospel of his majesty, it's no new kind of a gospel. You understand, no new thing. It's a fulfillment of what's already written. So the verses which show that Christ, the Moshiach, Christos, is, or Christos, is the, be, is the begotten son of the father, or John, Chapter 1, 1 to 6, John chapter 10, verse 30, Romans chapter 9, verse 5, and 1 John chapter 5, verse 20. So those are the verses you need to hit up those ones when they come along, hit them up with that. You know what I'm saying? Now, if they start to kind of um, wiggle and try to go sideways on you, you should recognize what you're looking at. Then... The 318, the 318 Holy Fathers, if you read books like um, the Kubrit and the Guest, you understand, the Queen of Sheba and all these things, Minulik, if you read and study, you know, other works such as um, the Ethiopic legend, uh, legends of our Lady Mariam or Mary, Christian Good Mariam, Jehovah's who is blessed. Remember, Christ did not emanate, he was born of Mary. He's born of the black Madonna. See, the emanation philosophy, say a man's emanated from a deity, it denies that. Like many people deny that Christ could be, that Yeshua could be born of a mother without a human seed. Because it's that natural mind puffed up. You know, but our Father, His Majesty, He bears witness to that. Boom. So the 318 holy fathers, like the 318 um, trained servants that Abraham had, right, when, who fought that war, this is spiritual warfare here, they unanimously excommunicated, no communication to Arius, and they condemned his teachings. In addition to this, they issued the creed which confesses the divinity of the Son, and they fixed the canon law of the church. You understand? You know, they fix these things. These things are, when you study the scripture, you find them, when the Holy Spirit guides you. But now what they had to do was to explain the basic, you know, the basic principles, the, these basic knowledge to the generation of, of that day and time. It was not to even update them, but to consolidate the basic creed. What is it that, what is it that, the, that, that the church of his majesty amains to, admits to? You know what I'm saying? Bears witness, has faith in, right? So the creed, which are 318 um, uh, Nikiawian or Nisayan or Nikian or Nisian, some say, but it's Nikia, fathers issued in 325 is the following. We believe or we bear witness in nominal and amen. You know what I'm saying? We amen. So that's the upgrade on this, B-L-I-E, because word, sound, and power. In fact, it's like this one is against word, sound, and power, because we all know that in the Rastafari, when we study word, sound, and power, the more knowledge you get as far as when you're able to even study dictionaries, 
You understand? First, it began with the very raw things that we knew. You understand how we recognize certain things, you know, um, in, in the language back, you know what I'm saying, going back, and we say backward never, forward ever, backward never, you know, and other, even the IRIC was at that time on that level based on the early Rastafari, but as other ones had more knowledge based on that same foundation that we would seek to build up, you know what I'm saying, not break down, we don't teach breaking down work, no, we build up, we, we taught that, but we repudiate that, some things we have to build up. And on the teaching and, to, and the church, I and I rise to fire, we have to build up. So it's not just break down. We're going to break down heretics. We're going to break them down. You know what I'm saying? We're going to break down every high thing and every imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge, you know what I'm saying, of God and against the knowledge of the Son of God. So it says, in Amen, Amen, I and I, Amen, right, Amen, in one God, God the Father, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth which is visible, and that which is invisible. Now, that one says that God is not invis invisible. So, once again, you deny the teachings of his majesty. I mean, come on, this is the foundation of his church, the church which he is the defender of. You understand? And we admit, amen, in one Lord, Jesus Christ, or Jesus Christ, one guitar, Jesus Christos, the only begotten Son of the Father. All this is scriptural, all this is biblical. The Father who was with him before the creation of the world. Light from light. Illumination from illumination. True God from true God. Begotten, not created. Consubstantial of the same substance with the Ab, with the Father through whom all things were made, and without him was not anything made, things in heaven and things on earth, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, not emanated down, but was born, you understand, of the black Madonna, was born of Kedistin Gamaria, you understand, that Ethiopian, Hebrew, if you please. He was incarnate, that means becoming carnals of flesh, coming into flesh, the Word, coming into flesh, by the Holy Spirit, by way of the Memphis Kedus, the Ruach HaKodesh, of the Holy Virgin Mary, Maria, the Black Madonna, the Black Mama, Mother. And he became man and was crucified for us under Pontius Pilatos, Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. You understand? It doesn't say he was murdered. It doesn't say he was killed. Because they didn't take his life. He laid it down and he picked it up. He suffered, died, and was buried. And on the third day, he rose again from the dead. Kamutan. According to the scriptures. So some say, oh, well, you know, the scripture. Well, this is according. This is our, our true faith. He ascended to heaven. He sitteth at the right hand of the Ab, of the Father. He will come again in His glory to judge the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. Why? Because it is eternal. And that right there, brothers and sisters, that's the foundation. You know, in the Mark um, prayer books, or uh, Sanat, it, it says, and I, I, had, I had shared this with you in the, the other vid. It says right here, it calls this, it's the fifth, um, it's the fifth anket, or the fifth article, in that sense, of yeah, Zawatir Zelot, right, or constant, continual prayer. And it's called Yahaymenot uh, Masharet, or Masaret, right, Yahaymenot, the living faith. That's the same word it uses in Jude. You understand? And in Jude, if you go to Jude, Jude is only one chapter. So I believe it's, it's yes, yeah, a one chapter um, epistle. And Jude says this right here. Jude verse uh, three. It says, "Beloved, beloved, what I judge, what I judge, hoy, when I gave all diligence to write to you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write to you, and." Exhort 
and advise you or counsel you that you should earnestly contend. You understand? We are contending in earnest, right? In like truth and sincerity and true faith for the faith, for Tawahido, for the Ritua Hymenot, for the teaching of His Imperial Majesty Karamawi Haila Shalase, Haila Shalase first, which was once delivered, right? This, this, this faith that we are contending for, this, this Hymenot that we are contending for, it was once delivered to the Kedusan, to the saints, to the holy ones. And everyone knows when you take the Nazarite vow, right? Like many said, the locks is because of the Nazarite vow. It says when anyone shall be, um, um, shall vow a vow to the Lord, like a Nazarite vow, that they will be separate, they will be holy. They will be Kedus. And saying Kedus, he says, be ye Kedus. Be ye holy. Yeshua HaMoshiach is Kedusu. He is the Holy One, and there is none other. You know what I'm saying? But, but see, here's the beautiful part, that in him and through him are all things, but it, only to those who accept, who receive, who can admit in it with a clear conscience, a clear conscience. That's why when we reason one who has fallen away or who may be in a stray way, we have to consider ourselves, as the Word says, and recognize we're not fighting against them flesh and blood. It's not a personal thing. You know what I'm saying? And true, sometimes we might even slip from that. Exio, you understand, to Sahana and Manana to Christos. You know, forgive I and I if we do. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm reminding myself, and I'm also reminding you all, and Brother um, um, Yaret, you know what I'm saying, Meheret. You know what I'm saying? We have to really keep ourselves grounded and consider that one as even ourselves. And I can't even say this. I, I've said some of those kind of things, you know, while we're growing and, you know, checking things out and based on the available resources, so forth and so on. But you have to receive that spirit, and you have to grow up to him in all things. So right here is the, um, here, here, what we just read right here, right, what we just read over here, right, if we have an opportunity, and we'll try to, this is the creed. This is the creed. Like we said, you can go to the website, um, put it in your search browser, Arius, you understand, or Arius, A-R-I-U-S, right? One word, second word, Ethiopian, third word, Orthodox, right? And when you search on that, then look for the website that is St. Mary of Zion, St. Mary of Zion. So we're going to read this creed right here and just wrap this up, all right? Here's the creed. Here's, this is what his majesty is defender of. Now, I just want you to recognize that. We had to even learn this and study on this and even repent because as we started studying and grow, we started to recognize these errors. And many of these errors, we could not know these things, you know what I'm saying, until we really receive the spirit and grow and be willing to study so we can be approved and not say things zealously. You know, in zeal and great passion, we admire Omar Tobijah's zeal. You know what I'm saying? But we recognize those errors of the knowledge of the Son of God, which are errors of, of and against the teaching of His Majesty. You know what I'm saying? So even the devils recognize that there's God and, you know, and one God, and they tremble. They recognize the Hadu Amlak, that Yahweh Ahad, right? Well, Bismillah, what woman says, Kadu Sahadu Amlak. Yahimenot Maseret Hulun Yasetra Andam Lak Bemihon Baa Begziari Rab in Namanale Degna Yahimenot Maseret Hulun Yasetra Andam Lak Bemihon Begziari Rab in Namanale Samaina Midrin Yasetra Yemi Tayawinna Yemai Tayawin Olem Sai Setter Kaarsu gar benabre and ye ab lij bemihon and geta be Jesus Christos in nominalen. Be berhan yet again ye berhan. Kaeuna tenya amlak yet again ye amlak yet a well de inji. Yal te fet a re. Be bahir you. Kaab gar ye me te kakelahulu, ba arsua yohone, 
በሰማይ ካለው በመድረም ካለው ያለ ያለ ርሱ ምን ምን የሆነ የለም ስለኛ ስለ ሰዎች እኛን ለማዳን ከሰማይ ወረደ በመንፈስ ቅዱስ ግብር ከቅድስተ ድንገል ለማርያም ፍጹም ሰው ነው ሆነ ደግሞ ስለኛ ተሰቀለ በጴንጤ ናውዩ በጲላጦስ ዘመን እርሱ መከራና ተቀበለ ሞተ ተቀበረ በሶስተኛው ቀን ከሙታነ ተለይቶ ተነሳ በቅዱሳት መጻሕፍት እንደ እንደ ተጻፈ በክብር በመስጋነ ወደ ሰማይ አረገ ዳባቱ ማቀን ተቀመጠ ዳገመኛማ በህያዋና በሙታን ለመፈረድ በመስጋና ይመጣ ለመነ ግሽቱ ፍጻሜ ያለው በመንፈስ ቅዱስ ምናምናል አርሱ ማጌታ ህይወትና የሚያሰጥ ከአብ የሸረጸ ከአብ ከወልድ ጋራ በአንድነት እና ሰገደለታለን እና መሰጋ ነዋለን አርሱ በነቢያት አድሮ የተናገረ ነው ከ ኡሉም በላይ በመቶን ሐዋርያት በሽሩዓት በአንዲታ ክብርታ ቤተክርስቲያን አናምናለን ኻጢያት የሚያሸረይባት በአንዲታ ጥምቀትም አናምናለን የሙታንም መነሻ ተስፋ አደርጋለን የሚመጣውንም ህይወት ለዘለ አለሙ አሜን and may all the faithful and true rastafari say amen shalom rastafari